doesn't stop on the ranch. It's like a snowball effect. Once the ball starts rolling, it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Yeah, more like a snowball effect of stupidity, Randy. Jeez, this is episode 44 of Al Kabalton. What's going on, everyone? We're just having some leftover pizza for breakfast. Nothing wrong with that. Always tastes good the next day. All right, we're just going to check out what we got to do uh, this coming up month. I mean, there's a lot of stuff we kind of left off doing and a lot of animals to attend to and some more production chains. So it's really been pretty busy lately. So we left off. We were kind of thinking we had to harvest our canola last month, but uh, we did end up having to push it to this month, which works out. And of course, our big field now, if we can find it here, number one is, yeah, it's covered in weeds, but that's okay. It's uh, got some straw on it now. We'll have to go pick that up at some point today, too. And, of course, our hay bales that are just over here. And as you can see, they they do show fertilizers, so that's got me thinking we... I mean, obviously, this is a field now um, that we could continue fertilizing and plowing or rolling as well. I'm not sure if the roller we have works for that, but that'll be interesting to kind of tell. And it looks like we can get away without plowing this field again. There is, of course, that strip in the middle, which we'll probably leave till we have to do the whole field again. Let's be real. We don't... That's not worth it just for that one little strip right there. And as far as planting goes, just because of the time of the year, I mean, we're going to have a lot of wheat. We could, of course, plant something again, but I think it might be worth putting on just some sort of cover crop. Um, we did try grass before, but it just takes so long to be able to harvest that it's not really worth it. We'd be in the same position we are pretty much this time next year. So that doesn't really work out because I'm thinking we want to plant corn um, and just make a really big silage harvest out of it before it's even fully um, fertile. I don't know, not fertilized, but ready to harvest. So that might be the game plan there. Um, as far as our productions go. Looks like we do still have a fair bit of hay, so that's good, and some silage ready to go. Mineral feed we're getting low on, but we have some extra, and we do have, looks like 46,000 liters ready to go, so I think that should be a couple absolute full refills. So the cows should be fine for now, and uh, you know what, actually there was one more thing I did want to look at as far as the animals go. Yeah, as you can see, I mean, they, they will need some, but they're doing okay as far as food goes right now. But you can, they're, they're getting pretty expensive, you know, like up there in their, their value, which is awesome. And, of course, you know, we can see we have a lot of these cows. These ones are only five months. Um, so they're just starting to grow a little bit older. But these ones that are getting to be 28, 32 months, you know, as their reproduction dwindles down to zero, I'm thinking that'll be... The time to get rid of them I don't know maybe there'll be less value when they can't reproduce so maybe this is as good as it gets as far as price goes and obviously we have 12 of them to sell so you know 12 times 3,000 so that, that's a fairly good payday just under 40 grand there um, and of course you know that's kind of we have a few of those coming up as time goes on but I think we're just gonna reinvest those back into actually some more milk cows so we can get that going um, just the beef is just such a slow process as far as our chickens go, we're getting lots of them, you know, like is, you know, they do reproduce fairly quickly. Um, and they should be just pumping out eggs. I mean, it, it, it has been a slow start there for sure. But again, they'll start doing that slowly but surely. And uh, maybe we'll have to bump it up to, you know, kind of buying another chunk of 60 that's just reproducing right away. But uh, we'll start go getting some field work done. Well, we got this all topped up with water too. Figured it was time to bring this guy down to the maple syrup production because this is kind of going to be its new little home. It works great to just refill and unload right there. It's kind of just like a little transfer case. Uh, so that works well. Um, as you can see, yeah, it's all topped up now. So that should be good. 
And we did, uh, well, we got some more bees. The contractors came in, dropped that off overnight. I swear it wasn't there just a second ago. And yeah, we did splurge. It cost us, I believe, $19,000, but uh, it is 33 hives. This one is only 10, and it's like 12 grand or something like that, maybe 10. So either way, we got about another third more for the price, so definitely worth it. And uh, we should be seeing a lot more honey starting to come in the future, so that's good. It's been a slow process in the beginning, but uh, it was definitely worth a fair bit when we got it sold last time, so that's good. And of course, we do have our new trailer down here to get everything just loaded up a lot easier and transported over. We don't need to bring the gooseneck down every time, so it's slowly but surely building up down here on the other end of the field, so that's nice. While we're here, you know, we did leave the harvester out because, well, we have this field that we got to harvest as well today. So we're probably just going to get the farmhands started on that while we just, well, we got to go bring a trailer over to help him unload as well as we got to start working on this other field. So I might have parked the truck in a terrible spot. Oh my gosh. But I think overall we should be okay and it might be worth it to... I don't know, do we just send him off, or do we do a headland? This field is not too bad. I mean, it has that one weird little swoop inlet. Do you think if I start him over here, is he a gradually going to go do the whole field, or is he just going to... I don't know, I'm curious. Because what really is lined up with the header? Something like that, maybe? I feel like he's not going to do a great job with that area, but I'm curious to see what he does nonetheless. So we're just going to let him go. Might cause some chaos in the field, but we're going to go grab a trailer and it'll enable us to do some other work today, which is really nice. Looks like he's kind of just ripping along the side there, so that actually, yeah, it, sh it should be good. That's promising. Might go check out just what the store has to offer on sale really quick. See if that new tractor, or well, new used tractor is still an option even. And it looks like the other half of our trailer, well, our second trailer rather, is down over there with the chicken, so that's fine. This field isn't too big, so overall it should be alright, just with the one trailer. Oh, of course there is one little mispatch right there, but uh, away she goes, and I suppose the truck might actually just be a decent option. So I don't see a reason why not. All right, just checking some stuff in the office here really quick. Pop onto the farm store. Oy, they do not have it anymore. That's okay. Um, I think it was just going to cost us a lot of money in the long run. And the 7 Series, you know, as much as it is expensive, we do have some workarounds with our other tractors now to kind of lessen the load on it. But what do we have here on sale? Looks like this is a slurry transfer bin, I believe which might be useful. I mean, our slurry tanker isn't the biggest and we do have to reload, make trips back several times. So if we could just like fill this up, 65,000 liters, you know, that probably enough to get the whole field done and we could just reload from there. And only $12,000, you know, with the money we do have, because we do have a fair bit now, at, uh, that is definitely an option. Same with, what is this guy? A planter. For, yeah, I mean, those are things that we currently can't plant, so that would give us some more options. I mean, it's obviously it's not not very large at all, and I'm not sure how often we're going to be actually doing those types of things. So it might be worth it to just hold off because I feel like we could spend less and lease a bigger piece of equipment for that price. This thing, however, I do kind of want to pick it up. I don't think it really matters what type of tires, although I think actually looking at it those are more road tires these ones are definitely probably better for the field than just silly grass areas that'll probably end up being in i do like this color of green of course we could do something different with it match it with the john deere and you wouldn't know the difference i mean obviously it doesn't say john deere but uh it looks pretty good i mean this green is not too far off it is another thousand dollars to do that, but, uh, hmm, you'd think it would repair the paint as well, so I think we're just going to actually leave it as it is and save a little bit more money. We can go pick that up at some point later, and we might just get the cows fed right now 
uh, while the harvester is kind of just doing its thing, it shouldn't have to refill for a little bit. Curious if we can get it in from this angle. Normally that's the way we pull out, but it looks like we can just squeak on through. As I say that, it feels like it's getting stuck. What is it getting stuck on? This is outrageous! Alright, we'll get it filled up, and while it is filling, we're going to go probably refill this mixer the best we can. Hop in the telehandler, because it's right here. Oh my god, did, did you see that? We narrowly avoided death there. I mean, maybe that, I mean, that, that, those are heavy. If those are landed on top of us, I mean, thank goodness we have some protection up there with those bars, but yeah, I mean, I don't think it would have caved it in, but that definitely, that was a scary experience. Oh my gosh. Well, I mean, I guess we got to clean up. That manure is definitely yeah, going to be a problem. This pit has definitely not been the most effective thing that it could be as far as trying to keep everything in there. So, I mean, it is what it is. We'll get these guys topped up best we can. We do have hay out in the field we can go pick up, so that's not a problem there. And, uh, gotta get this guy out of the way. Otherwise, we won't be able to get our wagon back in there. Suppose actually we can just do this and we'll kind of keep the cycle going. That last one is mostly all full, which is awesome. And uh, you know what? I think as much as we just pulled it out of there, we're just going to leave it because we are starting to run low on... I mean, we, we are, but we're not starting to run low on straw. We have a lot more that we're going to be harvesting up today. But uh, as far as manure goes, I think we're fine without creating more for now. As you can see, it's creating a little bit of problems for us, and we don't really go through too, too much of it. I suppose we could start selling it um, just as another source of income. I'm pretty sure, that I was pretty positive, actually, that the harvester would be all full at the moment, but it uh, looks like he's still going. Unfortunately, he's going to be turned the wrong way if we hop in the truck here, but... Uh, I think he'll probably be full pretty soon. I wonder if we can go over there quick and get him to stop. Alright, looks like we got there just in the nick of time. Unfortunately, it's still a little bit of a weird... A little bit of a weird spot, but I think... We've come a long way with our backing up skills. So, with a little bit of confidence here... We can nail it on the first try, kind of. If you look at it from this angle, we're golden! Alright, and we should be good with that. If we time it a little bit better next time, we can get him when he's coming back up. We'll probably just park it here so we can go around and meet up with him on the other side. It was quite precarious, but we somehow managed to get all three bales over here. But uh, the one thing that kind of is not so good is, well, we're out of silage now as well. Uh, we were act looking at getting, you know, a silo for the silage. And, of course, that would require us getting a forage wagon as well. So that could be something that we might have to look into sooner than later, and I think we do need to get a little bit of mineral feed in here as well, and that everything should be, well, I was going to say, pretty topped up, except for hay, which is out in the field, so it might be worth 
grabbing a couple. Can we pick this up with these? Oh, we can, baby. It's mega awkward. Might send us into the stratosphere. But if we can just do that, we don't even need to drive forward. We can just extend the boom. And they're probably going to be stuck, aren't they? This is so mega awkward. Come on. Oh, yeah. All right. Hey, not too bad. I think that might still be in range. There we go. Perfect. All right. We'll go pick up a couple hay bales. Might have to go meet up with our farmhand once again and probably start working on our straw as well. And maybe even order a contractor to come out here and see if they can get a silo put up for us, like, real quick. Something prefab. Uh, I don't know how expensive it's going to be, but thankfully we do have some money in the bank right now. Hopefully we did not damage anything there. Looks like it maybe just bounced off the tire. Oops. Doesn't look like his beacon is on just yet, so I think we're safe to just pull this down to the other side of the field and maybe get a couple passes done. Maybe one headland pass. No, I don't know. I, I feel like with wind rowing, it's better to do the headland last and it just really kind of cleans it all up and you can kind of just make a mess of the ends while you're turning around on the field and kind of just keep plowing through. Well, rowing through? I don't know. Um, <laughs> and then... Looks like a weight, actually. Would be useful on this guy. Yeah, that front end is off the ground for sure. So we might have to go pick that up. And uh, then we'll probably be in a good spot to unload our farmhand and the cultivator. Or cultivator. Uh, Combine harvester. <laughs> and uh, then start the field work on the straw. Thankfully, our weight is nice and close. I kind of couldn't remember where we put it. I feel like it's something that should probably go on our shelves in the bubble area. The bubble shed. I don't know. I like it. It's a nice little yellow shed. It blends in. It looks nice. It wasn't very expensive, and it does its job great. I'm curious if a mulcher would be worth going over this field on. Well, of course, we don't have one, but that's you know something we could consider investing in. I don't know how often we would really end up using it um, but, or even what this field's going to be planted with next. So we're just going to leave this here for now. Looks like we're in a decent spot. We can get the truck started up and uh, rip on over to the harvester. Easy peasy. This truck is a work truck, you know does the job pretty well. It's got a lot of things it can do, of course. Just lots of like nice little towing things. I don't know if this could tip, but it certainly can pull it along and just pull it as a trailer. So, I mean, useful in that sense. Hopefully we can get this whole field in just a one trailer. That would be ideal. I don't know if we're going to need this trailer for a while, so it possibly could just sit here with the cover on pull it out of this guy's way and rip over to the other end of the field. Oh, he's going to back up. Oh, my God. Of course he is. Okay. This is awkward. Okay. That's right. I think it's safe to say that uh, he's going to get the field done before we need to actually unload him again. So everything that he's got can just end up going in here. And, yeah, like I said, hopefully it's enough that just squeaks all into that trailer there. And we don't really have to unload it again. I suppose we should hop in this guy. Break our arm, putting it into first gear. And I wonder if this weight is enough for us. This wind rower, it's, you know, it doesn't require a lot of horsepower to run, but it is very heavy. And, of course, this is a smaller size tractor. Uh, you know, I, I, well, smaller end of medium, small medium, it's medium. So it's not too bad in that sense, but, of course, it's not very heavy as a result. We'll see how it goes. And yeah, this windrow is definitely big enough to just combine a lot of these swaths together. So we'll probably go up and down with the rows, and then, like I said, finish off with the headland on this guy. And we should be looking pretty good. Get it turned on. It's already lowered, of course. 
and we're good. This will be a lot more efficient when it comes to bailing this field because that's a lot of rows to go up and down with the baler. Would not be looking forward to that. So, you know, we'll see how this wind rower goes and maybe this little lease will turn into a buying opportunity for this guy. I don't, who knows? We'll see. Alright, well that, I think, should be all of it. It's definitely looking way better out here than it did before, but I had some interesting thoughts while I was doing it. So, you know, we used the wind rower on the field, which essentially looked like it could combine three swaths into one. So you would think, okay, that's two, th you know, two thirds time saved, but equally we did have to go over the field entirely one more time because of wind rowing so that kind of cuts out another third of the work so really did we only save about a third of the time you know like if we had started bailing when we started wind rowing how far along in the field would we be at halfway two thirds i'm curious you know if, if you have any thoughts on this let me know like it's just something interesting uh, and i suppose we're all done with this guy now so we could Get them loaded back up onto the tractor and let the farm store know. They can come pick that guy back up. I guess they'll probably have to send two people out in their truck and uh, somebody to pick up their semi-truck. They did just leave it here overnight. They knew it was in good hands. What, are we going to joyride in it or something? No, that would have been great. But no, we did not. And looks like our front weight actually did some pretty good work there. So... We will uh, see what happens next. I suppose we should grab our baler and maybe just start doing that. We might need to look at something, uh, maybe check out something on the store. We get a auto load trailer. Do we lease another one? They can bring it back on this. I don't know. Uh, we'll look at some options. Not a whole lot different than last time, of course. Um, you know what? This one we found out it's kind of the only one that works for the size of bales that we have. Unfortunately, I don't think we can, I mean, we could buy it, but I don't think we can afford to buy it right now with some of the other things we have going on, especially with us being out of silage. Uh, so with that being said, I was looking at something like a forage wagon um, to just pull behind as we just straight up mow some grass, some extra stuff around the yard. I don't think we want to spend too much money, even, you know, 46, that extra 16,000, I feel like we could put to good use especially if we can just dump it right off into the silo um so i'm not really too concerned about it being like too small at the moment um same with the speed because i believe we're just limited to what our mower can do so you know it, it is what it is there you know it might be worth it to just put a couple extra on just to see how it goes but thirty thousand five hundred, so we, we'll buy that as well uh, and uh, there's a lot of stuff that's at the store that we should maybe go think about going to pick up, getting delivered here. Uh, and uh, yeah, just a little bit of logistics work. Thankfully, 
the harvester was able to hold all of it in there before needing to unload again. So we'll just get it put into the trailer and see if all of it fits into there because that would be awesome as well. The price is pretty low, actually at its seasonal low at the moment just because while well, everyone's harvesting at this time of year, I believe around November is when it gets to its highest for the canola. So we'll probably just hold on to it until then unless the price just happens to spike up. We might have to keep an eye on it, but not too big of a priority. And I don't think it's a full hopper by any means, so we'll see if it fits in there. I guess the only restriction would be, well, I mean, if there is too much, obviously, for it to overflow. But yeah, it looks like, looks like we're good there. Awesome. This thing is so, so slow. But I mean, it's used to going through fields. But honestly, just with how far away that field is, it feels like it takes forever to get across the yard. <laughs> it took so long, in fact, looks like the shop just showed up with our new purchase. And, of course, they probably have somebody else in there so they can take back their other stuff. So that's awesome. Pretty good timing there. All right, and by the time we pulled out, it looks like the contractors are here as well. Double whammy! All right, we already have the 6930 out, so it might be worth seeing if it can run this bail loader. Loader? Trailer? Unloader? Does it all. I'm not sure if it will be able to. I don't believe it had a horsepower requirement, but I mean, it's more so once it gets fully loaded, it is going to be really heavy. So, looks like the shop just kind of dropped it off here for us. Unfolded. Unloaded. Yeah, it looks like it's definitely going pretty slow. But again, is that just first gear? Once we're kind of rolling, if we can stay rolling, I think we'll be okay. We did take away a couple bales. I think, what, four? So, we might be down to already 13 which I think the trailer can hold 14, maybe. So we'll see if, I think it's just, yeah, it might be just one full trailer load over here. It's gonna come in really handy with our straw on the other end of the field, though. Figured we'd take this opportunity to repair this guy. I knew it was getting kind of low. Um, I feel like we did buy this on sale because there's no way we put 45 hours into this thing. Um, but $4,200 to repair it, so that's good. It should be a lot faster now. I feel like that was probably a bigger issue as to why this thing was going so slowly before. So hopefully we can get our jobs done a lot quicker. And we got our tractor all refueled now, so that is awesome. Thankfully, we were able to get all of that put into the one load. So we'll just throw the cover on there for now, and we'll just get to bailing. We'll have to think about what to do with that other field now, because I feel like we are kind of just like scraping the bottom of the barrel for kind of grass and silage, hay, stuff like that. And of course, if we did want to move over into sheep, 
we're gonna need a lot more grass, so uh, let's not start this off really wonky. We'll get lined up kind of straight. And uh, yeah, as far as the swaths go, I mean, great that they are bigger, but of course, you know, even when we were trying to go as straight as we could, they still were leaving little parts here and there, so we'll see how the intake does on the baler, if it can actually pick them up properly, or if it's leaving little bits behind, because if we have to go over the field again to pick up a lot of little extra areas, then obviously that's not going to be time effective at all, so that's not good. But it looks like it's doing pretty well so far. Hopefully that trend continues. that field's looking just dandy. It really is. So many bales. I don't even know how many are on there, but it might be worth trying to get them picked up. That way we don't get hit with an extra day's cost on that trailer. So we'll probably get our baler put away. Same with our seed as well. And we'll probably go switch over to the other tractor. I'm not sure which is faster out of the two, but uh, we'll see which one I don't know, I guess we already have the one hooked up, the 6930. We'll probably just roll with that one again. Alright, it's actually getting pretty late in the day, as you can probably tell by uh, Randy Longshadow over here with the silo. But uh, yeah, the contractors, he said he could use a little bit of a hand, and I'd rather not pay for him to come out again tomorrow and pay the leasing fee on having our auto load trailer for another day. So that's ultimately going to be cheaper, so we're going to get this guy a hand, knock this bale down, and uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll get our silo put up. And again, we have this crazy resilient... No, I don't even know, man. Well, all right, there we go. That looks pretty good, and uh, yeah, it looks like we were able to get that snow kind of just out of here. I believe what happened was it was actually still in the bucket when all the other snow melted, 
and uh, for some reason it just doesn't register as like needing to go away anymore so thankfully a little bit of landscaping magic and she's gone and yeah this is it this is looks to be the standard kind of build around town and uh, they were able to get it put in pretty quickly of course not cheap sixty thousand dollars but uh, this should make our lives a lot easier as far as silage goes so we can just dump it all off in here it'll suck it up into the top it can all ferment we can just drive right under and uh, get it unloaded here zip over to this side and get it unloaded here so uh, I guess we could maybe maybe sell our silage wrapper too just to make back a little bit of the extra money that we lost to uh to fund this big boy all right we're looking good of course we are kind of getting down to that point where it's like oh do we have enough money again i mean forty thousand in the bank but still we want to start paying off our loan and uh forty thousand isn't quite gonna cut it but we do have a lot of the tools now to just be making money of course we got a lot of stuff going on up here um you know I'll, we do have two now full sunflower greenhouses we did change up what we were making there and of course we do actually have a pallet pusher um, installed on some of these more narrow ones too so we can kind of just push everything to the end so that's good we so yeah we have two sunflowers they seem to be worth a fair bit of money um, so that's kind of the idea there same with one full lettuce greenhouse because yeah those seem to be kind of the money makers and then this one back here is uh, well it's just a whole mix of stuff um, as you can see we've got looks like some tomatoes uh, I want to say yeah potatoes and strawberries all kind of in the mix here um, this is kind of just our personal kind of garden for stuff that we need and just a little bit of some extra stuff to sell as well and yeah another pallet pusher in here is just helpful in getting these pallets all pushed off to the end and then we can load them in the truck a lot easier that way so we're looking good there and yeah I think uh, we've gotten a lot of work done today so we've got to go pick up a forage wagon tomorrow in the morning and uh, get a little bit more work done of course get all our bales picked up might want to start looking at uh, dealing with that manure probably get some slurry done of course we do have our slurry bin to go pick up as well so that's exciting should make that job a heck of a lot easier going forward so we'll have to see how that goes too all right Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.